政府嘅官員入嚟。All right, we have a quorum. Let us invite the officials and the deputations into the room. Yes, we have a quorum already. Um, we're waiting for the officials and the deputations. You may now go out if you want. Uh, the meeting has been called to order. Um, Mr. Chang, please wait uh, uh, for the deputations. They are coming in. Shall we start? In fact, we have already started. May I welcome the government officials and also deputations for attending the meeting. Today's meeting is for discussing the Low Income Working Family Allowance, or LIFA in short. We are to listen to the views of deputation in the first uh, part, and then in the second part, we'll discuss with the administration. Even if we are to meet with the deputations, uh, we have to uh, meet them in uh, two sessions. In the first, the first batch of 30 will give their views first, and then we'll have a break. Uh, or rather, we'll give five minutes to the policy secretary to respond. And uh, 10 organizations or deputations have yet to arrive, so I expect that in the first session, uh, we may end earlier. In that case, uh, then in the next uh, session, uh, we will uh, um, go on. Or rather, before we go into the next session, we can um, I can open the floor to members uh, to discuss the matter with uh, the policy secretary. And then uh, after we've uh, completed the time, made, use of, made full use of time, of the first session, then we'll uh, move on to the second session to um, allow the second uh, group of deputations to come in. Let me remind the uh, speakers that um, you can uh, make use of the earpiece and the microphone. And uh, channel um, zero is the floor, channel one is Cantonese, and channel two is English. Your speeches or submissions are not protected by the Legislative Power, uh, Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance, i.e., you are responsible for what you say. All right. Uh, each deputation will be given three minutes. After the deputations have finished, then I'll ask the Policy Secretary to reply. The first is Mr. Kong Sing Yu of the DAB. Uh, Mr. Chang, Chairman, Members, uh, good afternoon. Last week, the, or rather last month, uh, the C in his passages proposed the LIFA, LIFA. That's in fact what the DAB has been asking for. This is a second line of uh, or safe, second level safety net. Um, there will also be a child allowance. Uh, this will help to prevent. 
uh, cross-generation profit poverty, and we welcome that uh, to make good use of public funds and to encourage um, work. Um, there's a need to have a suitable income test and asset test to make the system more effective in helping the needed families, the needy families. There are two uh, proposals we want to make. Now it's said that each child will be given a child allowance. Uh, this will help to prevent cross-generation poverty. We also hope that more disadvantaged uh, people can be assisted. Uh, chronically Ill, the chronically Ill, the elderly, <coughs> and the disabled need the help of their families. The families, therefore, have a heavy burden. According to the family situation, if there is a, the, the need to care for a chronically ill person, and then uh, the such a family will be uh, should be given an additional allowance. The administration <coughs> proposes to just count the working hours of just one family member, but the uh, income uh, is uh, calculated on a family basis. If um, income is counted on a family basis, then the working hours should also be counted on the total number of working hours worked by all members of the family in order to encourage uh, the uh, increase uh, the, the um, incentive um, for uh, working. Now there's a need to, can, uh, to um, encourage women to work. Now if the scheme um, just count the working hours of just one family members but count the whole family income that uh, will be a deterrent uh, to um, women working. Now many low income workers uh, may just be working on uh, casual jobs. They may work irregular on an irregular basis. Now we are concerned uh, that uh, there is filibustering in the LegCo in uh, scrutinizing the bill, appropriation bill. The members should consider whether filibustering will um, Im uh, Im impede the implementation of this very important measure. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Kong of uh, Teen Soi Wai Community Development Alliance. Um, thank you, Chairman. I may just be repeating myself because I've met with uh, Mr. Chairman before we propose to reduce the total number of working hours from 206 to 176, 208 to 176. I want to tell you several stories. A few days ago, uh, a parent talked to me. Um, the father came home, uh, comes home after work, but everybody is sleeping. Now, if uh, one works in Tin so uh, one uh, lives in Tin so Wai and works in the urban area. Well, even if one works for eight hours a day, one will only be um, one will take three hours of traveling to and from uh, work. Now one may be working on a construction site. One works for the uh, uh, better development of Hong Kong, but there is no time for the father uh, to spend with his child. Of course, it may not be the fault of the government. The LIFA is a good thing, but it requires 208 hours times um, divided by 26 and uh, times it by 26 and then days and um, also plus three hours uh, of traveling. Um, they really want to spend uh, time with their children. Now the government says that one for four hours is the starting um, point, and um, the administration put a cap on 208, uh, or rather uh, used 208 as a threshold for an additional allowance. Is it a kind of uh, work incentive, or is the government going to remove people's hope from the government? The government can change the quality of our people it has the ability to reduce the poverty gap. Why the administration set the threshold at 208 hours? 
Does it mean that the administration is of the view that our families are not broken up yet and want it to be broken, want them to be broken up? Um, and, um, they don't want the administration doesn't want uh, the um, parents to spend more time with their children. Uh, Mr. Cheung is a father, I believe, and it's not reasonable uh, to uh, prevent a father from. Um, uh, is uh, is not uh, appropriate to keep a father keep the father at work so that he has no time to spend with his child. It's just another four hundred dollars. Why can't you be more generous? The government is capable. Why can't uh, the administration reduce the cap the, the threshold to eight dollars to a lower level? Next, uh, Mr. Wen of uh, the Democratic Party. Uh, the Democratic Party supports the LIFA. Like other social policies, the government is just uh, doing uh, bits and pieces, and there are few uh, major flaws in this scheme. First, uh, there is no uh, disability perspective. Now, according uh, to the CNS department, there are over 300,000 people who are disabled, and they are above the age of uh, 14. Eighty-seven percent of them do not engage in any economic activity. About 13 percent or 45,000 are working. According to the Hong Kong Rehab Association, of the uh, interviewee, 1,000 interviewees, uh, the employment rate is 51.5 percent. An average household income is seventy seven thousand nine hundred dollars. The uh, LIFA has not taken into account the difficulty of the PWDs, and there uh, is no measure to care for them. And um, we are concerned that um, the singletons are not cared for. Uh, a single person family is still a Family, but um, the single parent family, uh, single person family, is not given any assistance under the uh, LIFA. You should, uh, the director, or uh, rather the policy secretary, should have the number. Only two percent of um, the single uh, persons, uh, or two percent of the population, belong to. Uh, single person families. I think the uh, threshold for working hours um, uh, is not appropriate. Uh, look at a five day week. It seems that 44 hours is a reasonable level or a consensus. If it is 208, it will mean uh, 8 times 26 is 206 hours. It goes against government policy. If it is four, four, six, uh, forty-four times uh, four weeks, forty-four hours times four weeks is one seven six. So, um, if uh, it is uh, sixty percent, then the hours should be one o five hours. Mr. Chen of Tinsui Wai Development. Tinsui, thank you, Chairman. The Tinsui Wai Community Development Network is concerned about development of women and the participation and also the empowerment of uh, such women. We want to build a, you know, a society where there is gender equality. Regarding the LF, LIFA, we have three proposals. First of all, uh, using an allowance to help the poor is not really tackling the root of the problem. In the entire discussion on poverty alleviation, we have seen and heard uh, a lot about uh, how we should <clears throat> work out the poverty line, and those below the work poverty line should be assisted by way of the LF LIFA, so that they be. However, in the calculation, you have overlooked one point, which is the causes of poverty. If you ignore the causes of poverty, it's very easy uh, for you to, on the one hand, helping the poor through <clears throat> poverty alleviation measures, while on the other hand, you are creating other uh, poor people. Including de depriving the workers through low wages, you know, uneven distribution of power and land. 
while you give away the uh, freebies, you are you know creating more poverty elsewhere. So the LFA, LIFA will not serve the purpose of alleviating poverty. Uh, then you may end up with even more poor people. Regarding working hours, uh, the requirement is very very stringent. For the grassroots, this is very unfair. Uh, this is unfair to these grassroots people because for civil servants, um, most of them now work on for five days in a week, but the LIFA requires them to work for six days in a week and, and uh, eight hours per day, and this is actually uh, uh, higher than the standard laid down by the ILO. Why do you have such a requirement? Coming back to the question of poverty, poverty is not just about money. When you have a family, where the state, the health, the space, and the time uh, uh, available to these families are different from others, it will create uh, result in poverty. If the breadwinner has to work for 208 hours, they will simply have no time for recreation or to spend time with the children. And thirdly, uh, you require longer working hours and you've not considered a gender issue. In the advertisement we've heard <coughs> about the slogan mainstreaming, you know, uh, you know, gender equality. But but I think we're talking about you're know, mainstreaming uh, the concept of uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, the predominance of of of, of the male gender. Uh, uh, we see that you're saying that people should who have the ability to should, to work should work. But then we have ignored the fact that other than earning wages, we also need to spend time in in, in the family to look after the, the young and the disabled and the senior citizens. However, the LIFA have not taken this into consideration. You ask the grassroots workers to work for 208 hours so they don't have the time to look after the families. We propose, therefore, that you should shorten the, the, the working hour requirements to 40 hours per week, and you should come up with family-friendly measures so that you can really, you know, <clears throat> you know, up with the principle of uh, gender equality. Chairman, uh, we welcome the uh, uh, proposal for the LIFA. As I said, the government is only, you know, adopting a piecemeal approach. Uh, since last year, uh, we had a report on poverty, and that report had not carried any analysis of the <coughs> poverty on the part of the disabled persons. Let me talk about the poverty situation of the disabled persons. Uh, the CNS department told us that more than eighty percent of the disabled uh, do, are not, <coughs> uh, you know, employed, and some organisations have done a survey and found out that even for the handicapped who are working, the incomes tends to be low. But they need to incur expenses on medical, uh, medicine, and, and health. Furthermore, given that their income level is low and they have an unemployment rate, high unemployment rate, we need a focused, uh, you know, approach to, to alleviate poverty for the disabled. The LIFA, uh, you know, covers allowance for children, but not for <coughs> the handicapped, senior citizens, and those who are chronically ill. Uh, we are disappointed. We hope the government will provide similar allowances for those people. Next, the issue of working hours. Uh, in considering that you've not taken on board the need of the disabled. For a typical person who works for eight hours a week, that is already very reasonable. How can you require the disabled or the carers to work for 28 hours? How can you expect them to still have time to, 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 to be take up the duties of a carer. We strongly demand that the working hour requirement should be reduced. And for certain special groups, uh, we can also take into consideration the hours that they work at home. Uh, according to the International Covenant, the disabled person should be <coughs> guaranteed a reasonable living standard. So when you come with these measures, please do not ignore the disabled person each and every time. In the long term, when it comes to a, 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 poverty, uh, a policy regarding poverty, you should also take into consideration the needs of the disabled. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Wang yin Tat from the Neighborhood and Worker Service Center. Thank you. Regarding the low-income family allowance proposal, and allow, and uh, in the past we have been asking for a subsidy, so that the household will be able to attain a, a you know a minimum a basic uh, uh, living standard. But the proposal for the LIFA 
and uh, it's different from how you calculate the poverty line. When you calculate the poverty line, you only take into the income. You don't consider whether or not the, the incomes are able to meet uh, make ends meet. So the LIFA doesn't mean that you can really uh, help more of these poor families. Uh, you cannot uh, guarantee that they will be able to attain, uh, you know, a basic living standard. So I hope the government will consider uh, using the basic, you know, um, cost of living uh, index uh, as reference. And the LIFA concept should be implemented in such a way that the poor families can attain a, a, a basic living standard. But anyway, the government is going to proceed with the LIFA. Uh, uh, my question, first of all, is that we should the LIFA uh, is, has become a kind of a bonus for those who work long hours and an enhanced version of the transport subsidy. The threshold is so high, requiring the um, uh, the the person to work for 208 hours. So you're asking low-income family bread earners not to become sick and not to take holidays and not even enjoy the public holidays. Otherwise, they wouldn't even be entitled to the LIFA allowance. And then, uh, if you work on construction sites, you know, you pray that it doesn't rain. Otherwise, you you there will, there will be no work and you can't make up the 28 hours. So, for many low-income households, they will not be able to benefit from the allowance. Uh, nobody want to collect the allowance if they, uh, if they can help it. Uh, if, if, if there is a plumber for work, they will want, obviously want to work. But sometimes they simply cannot. You know, you know, meet the standard. The 208 hours is already too stringent, and many families, as a result, will not get the <clears throat> the allowance. I therefore hope that the 208 hours should be reduced. And and secondly, you take into consideration the transportation expenses and treat them as part of the income. But for low-income families, the transport subsidy or allowance uh, is aimed at helping people living in remote areas to work in the urban areas. So don't confuse these two different concepts. And finally, uh, helping the children of low-household families. But some of these children with special educational needs, uh, they have even greater needs, uh, similar to the situation of the disabled. But they're not even receiving uh, disability allowances. For these children, uh, uh, you shouldn't add something on top of the LIFA so that the families can have more resources to improve the uh, the, the, the living standard of these uh, children. Next, I'm Wong Yu Tat from the uh, uh, <clears throat> Low Income Family Concern Group. Well, we work very long hours. We have to pay our rents. Our incomes are so low, and after we've paid our rents, we have nothing left even for our meals. I hope that you would help us. The secretary told, told me that I can apply for you know uh, rental allowance if, uh, if for, uh, but uh, but I'm also working so I don't know how I can make that application so please do not bully the uh, you know single parent households especially for <clears throat> ignorant women like myself uh, we literally we can only take up cleansing work and I really don't know what to say I really am so much in despair that I had considered committing suicide, but somebody encouraged me and asked me not to take that through. Uh, somebody suggested uh, I should ask the government for assistance. I said, what assistance do I get? I'm a single parent family. I don't get any allowance to pay for my electricity bills or water charges. How can I support myself? I simply cannot. I don't have a place to stay. I have to rent my premises. So I hope that you can help me so that I can apply for a public housing flat. I. Why is it so difficult for you to 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 to, to give me the assistance? What I can what can I do? I mean, I'm a, I'm I'm in poor health. If I don't work, I won't even 
uh, be, I can't even be able to afford to buy my meals, and I don't you can't even find shelter to sleep under the flyover. Have you seek the assistance of social workers? No. I ask people from the community caring fund to 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 help me, and they're they they and they're doing that at the moment. I don't really know what I should do. That's why I've come here today. I made a great effort to come. Uh, I told my boss that even if he were to fire me, I would still take leave and come here uh, to express my my views. I find it really very difficult to 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 cope. Well, I'm sure uh, the social workers present here, uh, having heard Miss Wong, perhaps you can try and see how you can help her. No, I'm not just. It's not just about money. Okay, we've heard your uh, what you've told us. Perhaps the social workers present here uh, and those uh, social workers from Kwai Chung can can help you. You can also seek assistance from our complaints division. Thank you very much. You really should really uh, help us. Next, we have Choi Yi. Okay, from the Kwaifa Low Income Family Concern Group. Two points, Chairman. The 208 working hours requirement is unreasonable, and you only <coughs> consider the uh, working hours of a, of a single family member is not reasonable. 208 hours, uh, if you do your sums correctly, would mean that you work for six days in a week, eight hours per day. And the uh, LIFA is only tantamount to, you know, some sort of uh, diligence uh, uh, bonus. Uh, the workers are, de are being exploited and pay such low wages, and this is only a compensation for their extra effort. For civil servants and the secretary uh, present here, you only work five days in a week. Does it mean that you're not diligent? You're not working. You don't work for 28 hours a week. Uh, you don't need to. Commend these people for being diligent. Working for 208 hours per week is already too harsh. These people are already working very hard. If they don't work for 208 hours, it doesn't mean that they're not hard working. And Mr. Secretary, you don't even work for 208 hours per week yourself. Other than this, uh, you only calculate the uh, number of working hours of uh, the uh, of, a sing of the individual, uh, but whereas you will take into consideration my total household income. You only count the working hours of one single person for a four-person household where both parents are working. The, uh, this is not reasonable. You count my two wages, and you only take into consideration the working hours of one person, and it's not fair. If the working hours is calculated on a basis on a family basis, I think how can we, you know, build up a, a, a fairer and more society? We always talk about encouraging women to join the labor force, and if this allowance overlook this uh, question, and you do not uh, <coughs> count the working hours or uh, <coughs> on a household basis, then I think you are just contradicting yourself. There are many housewives who need to look after their family members. We don't have good uh, nursery services. So the 208 hours requirement make, would make it very dif difficult for many households to meet this requirement. So I hope you will consider scrapping the 208 hours working hour uh, restrictions and pack this, uh, your, your, your LIFA scheme to the transport allowance scheme. Next, we have uh, Ms. Yo Yo Chen from the Kwai Chung Estate Grassroots Concern Group. Thank you, Chairman. Well, we are a concern group comprising of a number of women who spend a lot of the time looking after the children and doing household chores, and they've written a submission on the uh, regarding the RFA. We think there are two areas in the LIFA which needs to be improved. First of all, the allowance should not just uh, help those uh, households earning uh, 50 or 60 percent of the medium household wage. You should also uh, consider 70, uh, those households earning 70 percent of the medium household income. Uh, 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 many of these families only relied on the income of a sole bread earner, the husband, and they very often cannot make ends meet. 
and uh, and also the husband's incomes are not stable. Whenever you have, <coughs> you know, major festivals or when there are funerals or when uh, and the school require extra fees to be paid, and the house husband will have to come up with ways to to to, to raise the extra amount required, and as a result, they may work a few hours longer, and as a result, they are no longer eligible for the allowance. Uh, these people, when they work, they do not just work for the wages. They also like to acquaint themselves with the labor market, to to meet more friends and the wide and the social circle. And if they go, a person goes up and their household income exceeds the limit a little bit, and they are not eligible to the LFA, you are not encouraging the the women to take up employment. So I therefore think that you should not uh, tackle. Poverty. You should also have measures to prevent poverty. So households earning seventy percent of the medium household income should also uh, be eligible. Some of our members have children with SCN. They're not hand physically handicapped. It, it's just that they are slow in learning, and and they uh, have uh, uh, suffer from attention deficit. They need sometimes they get support services, but they have to go to remote places. For those with, uh, you know, uh, dyslexia, they have to go to uh, Pofalum and so on, and also the and the treatment hours would be during school hours. Uh, these children are already slow with the learning, and they have to spend extra money for private tuition. So these how so they're under a lot of pressure. The household is also uh, require uh, some monetary assistance because uh, these children require more expenses than normal children. And our members think that for children with SEL, the allowances should be more than that of the able person uh, uh, <coughs> children. Finally, when the government <coughs> uh, laid down the working hour requirements, uh, the government is being too harsh. The government is proposing a five-day working week in order that we can have family harmony. And uh, but the, but but you're now say, suggesting that. Uh, are you suggesting that the family doesn't need uh, a harmonious? Uh, we don't need families, a harmonious family, uh, 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 and and require them to work such long hours. Next, Miss Wong, I think the officials can take a look around this chamber. You find many of us um, putting up this placard saying that we should scrap the 208 hours requirement. And it shows how harsh the requirement is. Does the government want to see these grassroots workers to work till they die before they can collect the uh, slightly uh, higher allowance? Uh, even if they uh, can uh, collect their allowance, would they have? Would they be able to 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 to, to enjoy it? And secondly. The L I F A is only confined to two-person household or, or households with more than two persons, but for singleton households uh, or single person, this is unfair. While we now have the protection of minimum wage, but since its implementation three years ago, it is raised from twenty to thirty dollars per hour, and we only have biannual review. But prices are now increasing so much; everything is getting more expensive. So for a singleton household, they also have expenses to incur. So it's not reasonable that they should be excluded from the LIFA scheme. So we would uh, uh, re demand that the government should uh, have conduct any review of the minimum wage and also adjust the upwards the minimum wage level. And also the single person household should also benefit from the LIFA scheme. Secondly, our concern group has always been concerned about. The relationship between LIFA and the transportation allowance. We demand that the whole transportation allowance should be separate from the LIFA scheme, and the two should not be combined. When the government <coughs> proposes any policy, it should have its justification. The transportation uh, allowance is a, a labour policy to encourage people to take up employment. Uh, the LIFA is a welfare measure. To alleviate the economic pressure of the low-income households, and you shouldn't confuse the policy, the principles of the two policies. The transportation allowance uh, to apply for that, you ha you will vet their employment status and where they work and how they take the transport. So the transportation allowance uh, has uh, you know clearly laid down criteria. Whether or not it's LIFA or the uh, transfer allowance, I don't think the allowance should count as part of the income. 
because they serve different purposes, and I don't understand why. Uh, 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 for the uh, uh, allowance for the handicap and the uh, you don't need to take count that as well. So the LFA and the transfer allowances should not count as part of the household income. Thank you. Ms. Cheng Fu Yan from the Kwai Cheng Parents' Rights Concern Group. Thanks, Chairman. Um, this lady from the Labor Rights Concern Group um, mentioned the problems associated with WITS and LIFA. The last time we met, um, Ms. Mr. Cheng, he said um, the, um, the allowance has helped a lot of people. However, according to our, the figures we have in hand, the LWB expected 200,000 applicants, but so far we only have around 30 percent of people applying. So what happens with the remaining 60 percent or so? Um, those who work in concern groups well understand that a lot of workers um, have decided not to apply because the procedures are too complicated. And now um, with LIFA, we are seeing a similar situation as WITS. Um, the procedures are complicated and the application requirements are quite high. And the result is a lot of people cannot, um, cannot enjoy the allowance or the scheme. And you can see that for any policy, if you do not have, um, if you do not think it over um, carefully, we often have to waste a lot of time afterwards. The requirement of 208 hours is only the first, um, the first barrier, and these barriers mean that a lot of people cannot benefit from the scheme. The government wanted to help. 200,000 families and 700,000 people, but we we are concerned that the um, the number of people who can benefit at the end might only be a third. So we urge for the cancellation of the 208-hour requirement. With the um, after the um, launch of LIFA, we we would like to see an annual review um, according to um, the situation at that time. Mr. Leung Shalun from Hong Kong Federation of Women's Centers. Can uh, someone please check his microphone? We welcome the government's um, idea of LIFA. However, um, having read the details, um, we see that the government is lacking a gender perspective in terms of um, welfare policy. And we hope the government can improve the scheme by introducing um, a gender perspective and the government should also introduce child allowance, which is currently being ignored. Under LIFA, there is a 208-hour um, requirement, which is very unreasonable. And this is equivalent to working six days a week and five hours a day. And this is against um, the work-life balance and family-friendly policies um, advocated by the government all along. And the government said that the 208 hour only applies to the individual and not the second um, working member of the family. And as such, a couple, um, both members of the couple cannot be, um, um, won't be, won't count towards the working hours. And as such, they might, um, the workers might need to work even more. And this 208-hour requirement is actually um, higher than um, 
they understand it. If you are asking them to work so many hours, is this the right way to um, to do it? A lot of workers only have part-time jobs, and they are ineligible because of the nature of their job. Does it mean they are no longer eligible for the scheme? If one of the members um, have to work long hours, the other member has to stay home to look after their children. The government is not doing a good job in um, carrying out gender mainstreaming. From child care services to LIFA, you are um, you are bringing across the message that um, the husband should work and the wife should stay home, and you are ignoring the needs of um, family carers. And you, the result is a lot of women would be driven to poverty because they have to take care of their family members. And there is a lack of resources for women, and they are in danger of being driven to poverty. And the government should um, acknowledge the value of family members who take care of their family members and, um, and confirm their, their values to the family. Um, Kwai Sheng Elders' Rights Concern Group, Ms. Liu. Um, Kwai Sheng Parents' Rights Concern Group. Um, I think the 208-hour requirement is way too harsh. If the father has to work for so long, um, they, it's, life is very difficult for the fathers. Sometimes I think the 208-hour requirement is too harsh and it's almost impossible to meet. The working, hour, the working hours are way too long. And the, the result is we cannot obtain this allowance. If they have to work so long, they won't have any time for their children and this will create family problems. And the, the mothers would also have a hard time um, and many families would effectively um, become single families if their fathers have to stay outside for so long. I hope the fathers won't have to um, work for so long, and in turn they will have more time for their kids at home. Even government staff only have to work five days a week, and now we have to work for so many hours. And this might create juvenile problems in the future with a lack of warmth uh, in the family. And why, um, why is only one member of the family eligible um, in the scheme? We should take the entire family into account. Mr. Jonathan Ho Kai Meng, the Hong Kong Federation of Trade Unions Social Affairs Commitment Committee. Um, we welcome the government's um, idea of LIFA, and it can help alleviate cross-generational poverty. However, we think that. Um, the scheme should be based on family and not individual, and it should be linked to minimum wage. And we should have a mechanism to avoid abuse of the system. On the on the line of 208 hours, um, this um, requirement is too high. Um, for security guard at a public housing estate. If 
um, if the staff takes one day off, um, he might not be able to meet this requirement of 208 hours. And only st only people who work um, more than a thousand hours can uh, obtain this uh, one thousand uh, dollar allowance. So this requirement of 208 hours need to be adjusted. Um, we recommend the government to establish um, a, um, standard working hours. If the standard working hours is being legislated, um, this allowance can be linked um, to the standard working hours. We are happy to see the government's efforts. However, um, more considerations need to be taken into account. And the application process must be streamlined. Um, the application form must be simplified. If you need to spend half an hour or more to fill out the form, this is way too long. If you apply for WITS, you might need to apply every 6 or 12 months. And if you have to spend 30 minutes or more to fill in a form, um, it makes life very difficult for the applicants. Um, Mr. Cheng, I'm not sure if you've seen the form yourself. Um, please simplify the form in order to benefit more people because this is a potential barrier for many people, especially those with um, um, lower education levels. So please um, think about it. Mr. Harris Young, um, Alliance Against Abuse of CSSA. Um, I, I'm not here to talk about CSSA, but about LIFA today. The government wanted to encourage um, low-income individuals to work more. I don't think people who work for 207 hours um, a month are lazy people. I'm not sure why the government has to adopt this um, one-off approach. If you are thinking about cost, um, you can use um, a pro rata approach. LIFA is supposed to encourage um, working family members. However, we um, the application requirements here are so high, and the government can actually adopt a negative t um, income tax approach, and it can remunerate the difference to the family members. Hong Kong needs a fairer society, and the government should not set this 208-hour requirement. As I said, do we um, do people who work for 207 hours not need help? The difference is so small; it's it's, it's less than one percent or zero point one percent. I don't understand why the government is being so bureaucratic. And you are giving this allowance to people who work 208 hours, but let's say if if a, a staff member takes one day off or half a day off, and if they cannot meet the requirement because of that, is it fair? If the gov the government is not doing a good job with LIFA, and as such, you are driving people to apply for CSSA. I'm not against any government welfare, but I think the government shouldn't be so bureaucratic. It's it's fair that people are saying that uh, uh, people are accusing the government of being cold-blooded, and I completely understand their pledge. If the system is so um, bureaucratic, even though I. Uh, I'm against the abuse of CSSA. The government should do better with the welfare system um, in order to mobilize um, more manpower. If the government is not being so strict with the 208-hour requirement, 
more people will be encouraged to work. So I urge the government to do better with the welfare system. Ms. Tam Kamlin from the Federation of Hong Kong and Kowloon Labor Unions. Um, the chief executive um, recommended launching LIFA in this year's policy address, and we welcome this idea. However, um, we are concerned with the 208-hour requirement, and the means testing is very stringent at the moment. And the means testing is actually contradicts some of the government's current policies, and there is room for improvement. According to the government's information, the, the LWB um, launched, um, published a study report on standard working hours, and in 2011, the average um, working hours were 42, 45.2 hours, and in other words, the 208-hour requirement is not met. Even for people who are willing to work for 208 hours, there might not be enough demand in the labor market. On the other hand, the government is, encourage, is encouraging five-day work, but on the other hand, it, it is asking applicants to work six hours a week and eight hours a day in order to um, receive the standard allowance. This is very um, contradicting. According to um, um, labor ordinance, um, workers who are employed for four weeks or above and those who work for at least 18 hours a week are entitled to labor benefits according to um, current requirements of the WITS scheme. Um, those who, um, those um, they will be uh, entitled to the allowance, and part-time staff who work for less than five days a week will be considered part-time staff. As I said, a lot of um, reports and information provided by the government have shown that the. Um, the 208-hour requirement is obviously too high. Many labor groups recommend um, a, a weekly working hours of 44 hours, and we recommend adopting 44 hours as a baseline, and the um, application requirements of LIFA should be um, lowered to a reasonable level. The nature of LIFA is different from that of the CSSA. We should um, encourage, um, we should allow these self-reliant workers to receive the allowance. So we hope the government can um, adopt the recommendations. I'm Che Chi Kei from um, the New People's Party. We should encourage those who are willing to work in order to alleviate working poor. However, there's, ob there's ob obviously controversy as to how we do it. Um, someone has mentioned th the concept of negative income tax. We believe that this approach um, is an effective tool in um, Improving the situation of of the grassroots, and we can help more people um, get out of po poverty and minimize um, the impacts on the economy. However, there are scholars overseas who believe that um, the negative tax will discourage people from working. In the UK, um, some people can. Um, are living on um, this allowance and various incentives to encourage uh, employment have been um, launched by the government. The crucial issue is the level of subsidy. 
there is a need to engage in active training to enhance productivity of the grassroots. We believe that the present uh, welfare measures have duplications. The administration should uh, review its whole welfare policy. It should reconsider various integrating various uh, poverty alleviation measures to make better use of public funds. Um, Mr. Sikoman of the Civic Party. The Civic Party proposes that the uh, families uh, should have at least two members in applying for a LIFA, and at least one is working, and the uh, family, uh, the, the working hours of the family should be 180 or more. If it is a single person, a single parent family or family with a PWD, then the working hours should only be 70. And there is one more condition. If there, the child is um, 16 or below, or 16 to 18 who are studying, or, or family with PWD, or family who have been waiting for three years and not been given the first housing allocation, as for um, means tests, um, it should be based on the present um, general waiting list. Um, and the uh, income of the family should not be more than the uh, income of the people waiting on the uh, on the waiting list of public housing. The level of subsidy should be 10 percent of the MMDHI. If income is equivalent to MMDHI or lower than that, it will be they will be given a full allowance. The allowance will be reduced according to the increase in income, and when Family income in, has increased to the level of a general waiting list, or more than that, there will be no subsidy. Based on that, the District Party has come up with the following solution: uh, using poverty line, 50 percent of MMDHI, then the uh, poverty population can be reduced by three, uh, 38 thousand, and the poverty number of uh, the percentage of poor people will be reduced by 3.5 percent. It's important to deal with poverty. At the same time, we need to pay attention to material level as well as the cultural life level. Um, for non-CSSA recipients, uh, if they are children, they should be given subsidy in terms of participating in extracurricular activities. As for unemployed young people, there should be a one-stop uh, training service and. There should be expansion of the continuing education fund. As for the elderly, there should be universal retirement protection. As for the PWDs, um, the number of rehab buses should be increased. There should be more sheltered workshops. We also propose that um, the government and uh, the NGOs um, um, should set um, at least a target of employing 2 percent of the staff um, who are, um, or rather, employing um, PWD not less than two percent of their staff numbers, and there should be more um, places for training for the PWDs. Now, without increasing tax, the administration is going to make use of uh, one thousand two hundred billion dollars to uh, implement a life that uh, will help the poor. Next is Mr. Long of the um, Sam Shui Po uh, Low Income Concern Group. I live in a rooftop structure in Sam Shui Po. I cannot work because of my bad eyesight. My wife works eight hours a day, uh, so, uh, four weeks um, for four weeks, uh, two hundred and eight hours, and if. Um, she take a break, uh, take a leave um, for one day. Then that will not meet two o two o eight hours threshold. The um, threshold of two o eight therefore hours is therefore not reasonable. The government is lying uh, if he, uh, it claims that it's helping the poor. It just doesn't want to help. On the thirtieth uh, of April, my wife was dismissed. And uh, that was by she was dismissed by Gammon, and I hope the administration will follow the case up. In 2011, she was employed by Gammon, and on 2014, she reached the age of 60, and she asked for one more year of of contract, 
and that's from uh, 2014 January to uh, 2015 January. Uh, but um, uh, in April this year, she was dismissed. Uh, she was only uh, given seven days of compensation. The government uh, should um, try to follow the case up and deal with these um, uh, the, the employer who uh, breached the law. The compensation should be one to three months instead of just um, and there shouldn't be offsetting of um, MPF uh, with long service pay or severance pay. Um, we should work together to achieve that. I also asked, asked the administration to impose rent control. Uh, the government uh, has uh, tax because of uh, land sales and also high rent, uh, but people suffer. Uh, we started to apply for public housing in 2006, but up till now we are not given any units. Um, the administration just sells land uh, to increase its income, and it doesn't um, um, provide public housing. The three-year waiting uh, pledge is a lie. Um, and also there are vacant units uh, just for keeping rats, and the units are not given to the poor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sid of the um, Kaifong Concern Group for Low Income. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I speak on those who are working poor. They have to work, therefore they, can, they can't come here. As for the threshold of two, tw uh, 208 hours, we have strong views. 208. What is the basis of coming up with the number 208? You may look at the policy of the uh, WITS um, requires uh, 72 hours, why 208 hours for life up? And also, all civil servants work for uh, 40 hours per week. Uh, does the administration think that each person, each worker from the grassroots have to work for eight hours, uh, for uh, six days per week, or 48 hours per week in order to reach 208 hours? Now, uh, a Kaifong is a driver, working hours are long. He works six days per week, eight hours a day. Last week, or rather last month, he only worked 181 hours. Is, it, is he not, uh, is he lazy? No. Um, um, there are rainy days and there are holidays, therefore he has no work. Oh, he had no work on those days. It's not that they don't want to work. There are many factors limiting their working hours. In another case, a worker is suffering from a sudden illness, and therefore his wife has to work in the McDonald's. Um, he, he himself suffered from gout, and um, he really uh, can't. Uh, even move if uh, there is the onset of the illness, and therefore his wife has to care for him, and she cannot work at the McDonald's on that day, so um, she cannot get to 208 uh, hours per month. They say if one uh, work, uh, one has lung cancer, then you really can't work for uh, 144 hours or 208 hours. It's really inhuman. Three, uh, four hundred dollars. Uh, is not a big sum. Uh, um, before the Easter holidays, I asked some. Of, I asked some of Kai Fong's where would they go during the holidays. They said that Easter holidays uh, have become is a holiday has become a headache. When it's a public holiday, people are concerned that where uh, can they get income. Four hundred dollars are very important to them. Four hundred dollars per month. And that means forty-eight hundred dollars per year. It's a big sum for the uh, Kai Fongs. Uh, the uh, Mr. Chung may be concerned about the budget or um, budget overrun. I can recall that in 2013, uh, Mr. K. K. Fong put a question to Mr. Chung: uh, How would uh, be how many would be expected to apply for WITS? Uh, the answer was more than 430,000, but the outturn, uh, the outcome was only uh, less than 100,000. 
uh, maybe you expect a lot of people applying for LIFA, but only a few will come up to apply. Next, uh, uh, Ms. Wu Kunming. I speak in Putonghua because I'm not good at speaking Cantonese. Uh, Mr. I've met with you, Mr. Cheung. I, you've heard my view. You should recognize me because when uh, there was a discussion in this council on low-income families, I would be present. I've uh, suffered over a long period of time. Uh, I've tried to change government policy so that government can care for families of needs. I'm glad to be here again. I think um, the administration has decided uh, to implement LIFA, uh, but I, I, I really, um, my hope is stashed uh, because there is a standard of uh, 208 hours. We have uh, we are a three-person family. We receive only about twelve thousand um, dollars per month, and then we pay about three thousand uh, dollars in terms of rent for a low-income family. Um, I think um, they they should be helped. The low-income family should be helped by, um, by means of this uh, life. But the working hour requirement is very stringent, and I doubt whether the administration uh, is sincere in helping the low-income families. Uh, my husband uh, can be eligible or could be eligible, uh, but uh, three months, ag uh, three years ago, he had a heart surgery, and he is now out of jobs. Um, we, um, the, my whole family relies on me um, to make an income, but I still have to care for my child and also my husband who is weak, and I therefore have low income. I need the help of the government. I'm just one of the many examples. There are many um, low-income families who face a lot of difficulties. Uh, for new arrivals, uh, they don't have relatives in Hong Kong. They have difficulties in find jo finding jobs. Uh, I hope the administration should um, provide the low-income families with help. Um, um, you only uh, provide um, more assistance to those who work longer hours. Uh, that's uh, that. In fact, is not appropriate because low-income families usually have very low income because they have small working. They, they have very limited uh, working hours. Next, Ms. Um, Yan. Um, I've met with Mr. Chung many times before, and many groups uh, present have also met with Mr. Chung before. Many times last month we met with Mr. Chung. The fam they, he, they, he should be familiar with our views. We still have to come because we would like to make a change to the present uh, to to the proposed policy through this public hearing. Um, there is one who opposed uh, the abuse CSSA. Let me tell you a story. Two years ago, I followed up a started to follow up a low-income family, a family of four: uh, husband and wife, a daughter in the university, and then a son uh, studying in secondary school. Uh, last month, I contacted that family. It's now a family of three. The father killed himself. What had happened? Uh, it was a low-income family, and it is still a low-income family. Uh, two years ago, um, the uh, son lost his uh, hearing and then lost the eyesight of one eye, and then, um, or ra rather, the, the the father had an accident, uh, lost his hearing, and also lost one eyesight, the eyesight one eye. Therefore, the um, wife um, just uh, distributed newspapers. At, um, st uh, at the MTR station to make a living. Uh, the father um, thought that he was a burden to the family. He was ill, and his wife had to work. And because of 
his illness, uh, Lord, uh, there is a, a big uh, medical bill. About two months ago, he didn't want to be a burden, and he killed himself. The whole family uh, becomes very unhappy. Well, I quote this example because there are such family, uh, such low-income families who uh, there were such uh, low-income families who, uh, who wouldn't, who, who were not helped in the future. Even if that is the life, uh, um, such a family cannot be helped. Now the family needs the money, but they are not. Uh, eligible because um, really no one can work 144 hours, not to say 208 hours per month. Shouldn't the family be helped? The father uh, killed himself, probably uh, because of the lack of policy help. I have no data, but I don't know whether the administration will check on those who killed themselves. How many? And, um, killed themselves because of um, financial problems. What I said is, uh, was just an example. Uh, well, uh, one is too many. Okay. Um, Mr. Li Kuo-kun, a concern for Grassroots Livelihood Alliance Limited. Ours is a group um, which is concerned about the uh, livelihood of grassroots. We want to speak on working hours. <coughs> two eight hours. Uh, uh, well, is a standard uh, too long? Uh, is a standard too high? Many um, will compare that with standard working hours. If you look at uh, different parts of the world, so they are referring to uh, forty hours per week, and that will only mean one hundred and seventy hours per month. Say Korea, Japan, USA, and Canada. Well, our civil servants are approaching that uh, 40, um, 44 hours per week. Now, the LIFA is a uh, basic policy to help uh, people. Why it is set at two hundred eight hours so that uh, people people have to work two eight two hundred eight hours in order to get the allowance to maintain their basic standard of living. Well, many uh, people want to work longer hours, but they have no say. Uh, the employers have the say. Even if they want to work more hours, they don't have the chance. Uh, if they don't, it's because they have not enough work. They they, they have not enough work that they become poor. Now, um, the st setting the threshold at two eight hours is to encourage people to work more. But you have to find out why they do not have enough work. They are in poverty because they do not have enough work, and yet they have the need uh, to have the money to keep them alive. Um, more uh, assistance for um, longer working hours, but for those who work for shorter working hours, do they, are they lazy? You have to find out the reason. If you are a working poor, if you have a job, you really want to work for more hours to uh, raise your family out of poverty, or to um, give a better life to your future generation. All those who have jobs. Um, in fact, do want to work for more hours. The question <coughs> is, they don't enough. They don't have enough uh, work. Let me now turn to the life art itself. When I talk to the um, Kai Vongs, they raise the issue of medical care. I'm referring to uh, health care. For those who are eligible to live. Uh, they work long hours, and they really have no chance to go to um, government uh, clinics. Um, so, will you consider, say, providing uh, more health care to children who are eligible to live? I think. Next, Miss Lao Lai King. I represent the concern group for the grassroots. 
Kai Falls. To put it simply, the LIFA scheme uh, is welcomed by most of the Kai Falls. However, the two-tier working hour requirement is too harsh. It's contrary to the interests of the workers and the and and also uh, family-friendly policies. Many working households uh, think that the family-friendly measures uh, <coughs> of the government is only lip service. The government is not, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, standing by its own principle. Uh, requiring them to work for 208 hours will simply, you know, exhaust the workers. Uh, I think you can describe it in 14 words in Chinese. Uh, if you work for very long hours, there's no happiness, and the children uh, are not looked after and so on. You require a person to work for 48 hours per week and 26 days in a week before they will make up 28 hours per month. The price you have to pay is not only long working hours, low wages, they can't afford to be sick. And what is most... Uh, what is Saddest is that they cannot even satisfy the most basic uh, needs of the family. That is, the parents can, you know, uh, go home earlier so that they can have this uh, meal together with the children. Uh, they work so hard, and uh, and the Kaifongs have a saying uh, that is, uh, you work so hard that you, your health would suffer. So the money that you earn is only <clears throat> for the purpose of paying your medical bills. Regarding the protection of labor rights, uh, the 208 hours requirement is, is very harsh. Although the government say there's a two-tier system, those who cannot uh, qualify for the $1,000 uh, dollar, uh, $1, allowance, uh, uh, if they work for 144 hours, they will, they will get, be entitled to receive $600. Uh, dollars and each child will get a subsidy of $800. While we agree with that, but what is pathetic is that when the government uh, know that these uh, households are renowned to the vulnerable group and that the government is uh, actually requiring them to work for such long hours that they have no control over their lives and for the working poor, in order that they can be eligible to the 400 extra, 400 extra dollars of allowance, they, uh, they, they, they are forced to work <clears throat> harder in order to earn the extra $1,000 so that they can help alleviate uh, the poverty and provide a better environment for the children to grow up. I therefore hope the government will scrap the 208 hours threshold and come up with a more reasonable and a more just uh, uh, standard so, uh, uh, so that you can have friend, family friendly measures to protect these households. We proposed the 72 hour working hours uh, requirements so that uh, the applicants for the allowance can apply for the allowance in a, in a, in a, in a, with dignity. Next, we have uh, Ms. Cho. Uh, yes, I belong. Uh, I'm Carmen, uh, representing the uh, rights of children in Tin Shui Wai. Again, I've come here today to fight for the rights of the, the school children. Low income families are only suffering from. Uh, financial hardship, they have to come up with the means to pay for the meals, the transportation, and so on, and also the <coughs> the expenses uh, uh, for the children's education and the fees they need to pay for the extra activities. Uh, all these add up to a heavy burden. Ever we have ever since we have the new three four four curriculum. Uh, the school encourages students to uh, take part in various. Uh, uh, extra activities, but because of the financial hardship, many students from deprived families cannot participate, so they don't have the equal right to participate. So my question for the secretary is this: the pep what is the purpose of the LIFA? If it is like the secretary said, the LIFA is aimed at helping the children of the low house, low income working households. So is the allowance meant to uh, to to pay for the living expenses of the children or to, uh, to or for the learning for uh, for the educational needs? I hope you will not ignore the letter. 
and you should provide for allowance for uh, such children uh, to to participate in extracurricular activities so that they have the equal right of participation and also to resolve the problem of intergenerational poverty. If the allowance is to help the children with their studies, I hope you will not overlook the children of the CSSA recipient households and that you should increase the allowance uh, correspondingly. Finally, uh, I hope the Secretary will Conduct. Will we set up a review mechanism for LIFA so that, the, as in the case of the student, sub, the student subsidy scheme has not been reviewed for more than ten years. So the amount of the allowance continues to lag behind the, the real needs of the applicants, uh, thus adversely affecting the development of our next generation. Four hundred dollars for the secretaries is perhaps nothing, but for low-income households like ourselves, it's very important. Whether or not children can have a better meal, and whether or not they can catch up with the studies, whether they can afford private tuition or take part in extra activities, very much is determined or determined by whether or not they get four hundred dollars. So, I hope the secretary will really stand on our side and really understand our difficulties and adjust downward the the the, the working hour requirements so that more households can benefit and can improve uh, on their standard of living. Next, we have Mr. Lee Yifeng from Tokawan Concern Group. Thank you. I rep I represent the Concern Group for the Grassroots Living in Tokawan. I have discussed the issue with many of our members, and in March we uh, heard about the lever uh, scheme. And I think if the threshold is set at 208 hours, half of our members do not qualify, uh, because many of the employers simply cannot allow them to uh, afford to give them so many hours of work. And the application process is also very complicated, and the Kai Fongs find it very difficult for them to apply. And some people also made the same point earlier that is whether or not this allowance would label the singleton persons. We are so worried that after you've launched the new allowance, uh, the rental allowance and trust allowance of the community caring fund, will those be scrapped? Uh, uh, the old rental allowance and the uh, transportation allowance under the how uh, the community caring fund, uh, the uh, uh, the threshold in terms of uh, number of hours is not so harsh. If I work for a hundred hours, I would be eligible for the full transportation allowance and the caring fund. Have you considered that many of the uh, <coughs> uh, grassroots households live in subdivided flats? I think you the government should. Uh, uh, I think all all these uh, measures may not help these households because when the landlords uh, know that they are entitled to LFA, they will charge them more in terms of the rentals and the utilities that they have to pay for. Eventually, only the landlords will benefit and not the uh, grassroots uh, households. I think the government can 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 do something to help. Uh, first of all, by building more public housing units, so that, and secondly. Uh, there should be, uh, you know, control on the prices uh, on rent and the utilities, uh, and and so has the government considered imposing controls? And if not, all these allowances eventually will only go to the pocket of the landowners, and the grassroots simply will not stand to benefit. So basically, they simply can't make ends meet. I can also tell a story about a young man. Uh, uh, he uh, he he is working, and because of the uh, uh, you know some measures by the government, he has become unemployed. So his right. Of cho to choose is being deprived of himself. All these allowances only provide temporary relief. There is no uh, long-term direction. Uh, could you respond in, say, five minutes, or I give you seven minutes? Twenty-five deputations and individuals have given us valuable views, and. Uh, 
uh, ever since this committee was set up uh, last year, this is the third hearing, uh, and I have attended each and every one. And this time, as before, we've had many valuable views. First of all, the purpose of the LIFA shows that the current administration has the determination to tackle the problem of poverty. We are not evading the issue. LIFA is going to be a long-term measure, it's not a short-term relief. We want this to be sustainable, and so in designing the scheme, we need to be careful. Of course, we haven't come to a final decision yet. We still have to work out the details, but we cannot, you know, wait for too long. We hope that we will be able to go to uh, uh, take this proposal to, to to FC. We're worried about the filibustering. If our proposal cannot be taken to FC in July, we're worried that the timetable for the launching of the scheme will be delayed. So we're very concerned about the budget debate. Of course, that is not the topic of our discussion today. Well, members uh, will, will, will realize this point and try to, you know, shorten the filibustering uh, if you can. And I also like to respond to a few points raised earlier regarding the 208 hours uh, threshold. When we set this level, I think this uh, the, this scheme is meant to be very lenient. 144 hours is the basic threshold. That is the beneficiary, the household to benefit the scheme should have one of its members working. We encourage them to become self-reliant. Uh, the concept is that they, they should those who work harder will will, will, will earn more. We are not encouraging people to receive uh, welfare if they uh, if they have the ability they should work and if 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 the income cannot make ends meet, the government will, will step in to, to help these people. For uh, we have a CSC payment for the CSC recipients. We will not provide any assistance. Uh, uh, we cannot allow people to benefit from a CSSA allowance and this allowance as well. We really want to, this scheme. The purpose of the scheme is to encourage people to take up employment. And secondly, we consider that most people will benefit from the scheme. According to our calculation, 250,000 households will benefit. And the the figures may not be 100 percent accurate, but it, there is a certain uh, degree of accuracy, because in 2011, 2012, the Census and Statistics Department and the government economists have conducted detailed study. Of course, later I will explain how we arrive at this figure: 250,000 households, or uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, 700,000 people, 180,000. Or uh, young children who are either studying. Uh, we don't count those who are attending universities. Anyone, uh, 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 children below the age of 21, uh, attending full-time schooling. Uh, we found out that the number of beneficiaries will be uh, will be many, and the expected expenditure will be about three billion per annum. It's no small sum. On the one hand, we have to consider the impact on the labor market because we don't know where after the scheme is launched, will it distort the market activities? We don't know. Let's say if the scheme is too lenient, then it, if we cut down the working hours requirement, uh, the, the, the applicant will say, I don't need to work so, 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 so hard. I mean, uh, why do I need to work so hard? And that would act further aggregate the labor shortage problem. Anyway, to be honest, we don't know what the impact will be, but we need to be cautious. And once the scheme is uh, launched, we have to consider the impact on the labor market and how it can help uh, alleviate poverty at the same time. I must emphasize that so long as someone works for 144 hours a month or 30 hours per week times four weeks, 144 hours per month, they will be covered by the scheme. They will receive a minimum of $600. As time we arrive at 208 hours, according to our figures, Many workers uh, of the uh, uh, grassroots households. Now, the uh, according to the figure I quoted, we expect that about 30 percent of the people are already working 208 hours per per month. Many people working in the catering, retail, and other industries, uh, security and property management. It's very easy for them to work for more than 28 hours, and therefore, on the basis that people who work harder will get more. We will give them more uh, uh, incentive if they work longer hours and they have difficulties. Then why don't we give them more assistance? That's why we have the second tier. It's not. I'm not saying that the other people are lazy. 
uh, don't have the illusion. Those who don't make 208 hours are lazy. 144 is the basic requirement. There is also a flexibility built in. For many single parent families, they cannot work for so long. It's 36 hours, they get half the allowance. 72 hours, they get a full amount. Uh, this is, we're talking about a basic allowance. 6,100. What six hundred and one hundred one thousand dollars? What about those who take sick leave? If they take sick sick leave and it's 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 paid leave, of course the uh, the employees are uh, entitled to annual leave and statutory holidays. We are still working out the details, uh, but we plan to we intend to be lenient. That is, if we're talking about a paid holiday, if you deduct. That, that that holiday they will not be entitled. So so for paid holidays, we regard the, the person to be to have work. We we will still count the, the, the number of hours work for that day. We are trying to help the, 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 the grassroots people. We we, 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 we try to, we want to be lenient. Single parent family thirty six and seventy hours for the eight hundred uh, uh, dollar allowance for children, uh, whether they they, they well, uh, the amount will be the same, the $800 allowance for children. So overall, the $100 for the children will not be affected by the number of working hours. The difference is, of course, only $400. I don't deny that it's important. But then, that that's the rationale for the two-tier arrangement. You've given us valuable views. We certainly go back and consider them, consider them carefully. Uh, and secondly, why is it that senior citizens, disabled persons, and the chronically ill are not covered? Now, the purpose of the scheme uh, is based on two uh, motives. Number one, encourage employment and self-reliance so that the, the households will not need to fall under the CSSA net, uh, net. And secondly, to improve the condition for the children so that we can break up the vicious cycle of intergenerational poverty. As these children grow up, as they go through their education, uh, there are more means uh, for them uh, so that the family will, will will be under less pressure. So the children is the most important part. For households with more children, each will be entitled to $800. Two would mean uh, 1,600. Three children would mean an allowance of 2,400. For senior citizens, we already have the old age allowance in place. And for disabled persons, we have the disability allowance in place. We're now reviewing the disability allowance, and for the OH allowance, there will be a review at the end of the year as to whether or not it can be further enhanced. For all these measures, uh, they will deal with those issues. Uh, we do not want to deal with those other issues uh, uh, with the help of the scheme. Uh, I think I've already used up my seven minutes. Perhaps I'll supplement uh, later on. We've scheduled to finish at 10 past six. We only have, we still have two or three more minutes left. Perhaps we should stop here, and we will come back again at 6.15. Uh, we'll be meeting another 29 deputations. Okay, please come back at 6.15.